In this video, we're going to be talking about phase angle and traveling waves. I put this in here. I love it. <laughs> What's a sheep's favorite wavelength? Lambda. Lambda. That's because we're going to be talking about wavelength in a second. So let's first of all look at what about points on a wave. And we're going to talk about radians because depending on which math class you take, you may not have already learned about radians. It's quite possible. So let me introduce this to you. So if you've already done radians, this will be easy. If you haven't, then this will be a little bit new. So we'll see. So if we just do one cycle of a wave. Now keep in mind, I can do more. I can do another one and so on. One cycle just means it's like one thing where if you copied and pasted it, you would get the same thing again. So for example, in this case right here, I could say that, hey, one cycle is actually, uh, well, from here, for example, to here could be one cycle or one period. But keep in mind, you could have also done it from here to here is also the same thing. From here to here is also the same thing. So this right here is often, now keep in mind, if this is in time that we're measuring here, then this is measuring a period. But if we were actually having this in distance, then this would be a wavelength. This would be this lambda. Haha, <laughs> lambda. So what we're going to be doing, the key thing we're going to be doing here is kind of wacky here. We're going to take this and kind of ignore the time, and we're going to just assign something here. We're going to assign that one whole period is going to be equal to 2 pi radians. This is the piece that you need to know. So that means that whatever you're doing, you're just going to make one cycle. So let me show it now with radians. I actually don't care about the time. I'm going to basically ignore that the time is there. I'm on top of this, going to just draw, let's just say, one nice cycle of uh, sine x, for example. This is a sine curve. And I'm going to say, aha, whatever is right here at this end, I'm going to call it 2 pi. Now this comes because if you go all the way around in a circle, you've actually gone what's called 2 pi radians. And so if you do half of a circle, it's called pi and so on. But the only thing you need to know, really, is just that one whole period is going to be called 2 pi radians. We're just going to assign it a value of 2 pi. Now, if that's 2 pi, does it make sense that halfway then must just be 1 pi? And let's keep going. What's half of that? Half of that must be pi over 2. And I'm going to teach you how to count in pi over 2s now. So now that means if I start from a left side and I go to the right, I say 1 pi over 2. This must then be 2 pi over 2. But if I wrote 2 pi over 2, what does that give me? Hey, the twos cancel out, I get pi, hooray. So that's why this is 2 pi over 2. If that's the case, then this next one must be, remember we're counting 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, this must be 3 pi over 2. Now, of course, the last one, oops, that's not over 4, that's supposed to be over 2. Last one, then should be, well, if it's 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, this must be 4 pi over 2. But if you think about 4 pi divided by 2, it's just 2 pi. So the most important thing is knowing how to do this. This right here is really, really important. Okay, really important here. I'm putting lots of stuff right here, really making sure you know it. Okay, so this right here, really important. You need to know this. If you know this, then this will be a lot easier for the phase angle. So let's look at an example then with phase for the traveling waves. So what is the phase? It's how far apart two points are on a wave as a fraction of one cycle or one period. And remember, one cycle or one period is going to be 2 pi radians. And we're going to measure this phase business in radians, and we're going to take a look at this. So let's just look at this one right here. We've got a curve going like this. A, B, and C are here. And we're asking, first of all, what's the phase difference between A and C? Before we can do this, I think it really helps to label everything. So again, we're going to label this one right here. The end is going to be 2 pi because that's one whole cycle. I mean, this then must be half of that. Half of 2 pi is just pi. Well, what's that? Just so we know everything else, this is pi over 2. Just to remind ourselves, this is half of that. And then we start counting by pi over 2s. 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2. This must be 3 pi over 2. Now we have everything we could ever need, I think. Let's see if we can figure this out. So when we want the phase difference between A and C, so in other words, uh, maybe I'll do this one here. In, uh, no, I'll do it in red. So between A and C. Let's look at that one right there. So between here and here. Well, look, what's the difference? It goes from 0 to, well, 2 pi. So 2 pi minus 0. So we can say that. So I'll write it down maybe. So I'll say so that means it's 2 pi minus 0. So that means the phase difference then must be just 2 pi radians. But we have a better way of saying it. If it's 2 pi, we actually say they're actually in phase. What does that mean? We have like, this is a little special case. In phase, that means the phase difference is just uh, 0 radian. 
That's the difference. That's because if you look carefully at this cycle, it repeats itself again. This point right here is point A is exactly at the start of a sine curve, goes up, down. Here it's about to start again. If it continued going in, it would be about to start again. So we could say two pi radians, but even better is to say zero because they're in phase. Let's look at a different one. So this one, by the way, like I said, is this was zero, which actually equals two pi. So that was that one. Let's look at the next one, the phase difference between B and C. Maybe I'll do that one in yellow. So from here to here. They're off, or you could say that you know if this is one whole cycle, they're off by one half of that. Or you could say the difference, you could actually say it this way, you could say, hey, what's the distance from here to here? In other words, what's 2 pi minus pi? So I can say that, so 2 pi minus 1 pi is just equal to pi. Ah, so that means I can say then that these are, uh, the phase difference then must just be pi radians. So that's how we can do this one. Let's look at another example just to make sure it makes sense. Let's do some more here. This one here looks kind of crazy, but it's just, you can see it as a cosine curve. It just starts up here, goes down here like this. This is one whole cycle is actually here. So that means before I do anything else, I'm going to label then from here is going to be zero. This then is going to be two pi. If that's two pi, half of that is going to be this one. That's going to be pi. If that's the case, this one right here is at pi over two. If that's the case, then remember, that's one pi over two, two pi over two, this one here must then be three pi over two. Now let's see if that can help us. We want the phase difference between A and B. Let's do that one first. So from A to B is only this distance right here, from A to B. Do you notice then I can say, ah, well it's gonna be, let's look at it carefully here, it's going to be from here to here, it's going to be pi minus pi over 2, you could say. You see that pi minus pi over 2? All right, what's that going to be? Well, I need a common denominator, don't I? So that means I'm going to make it like 2 pi uh, over 2 minus 1 pi over 2. And that means then the answer is just pi over 2. So that means my phase difference then is just pi over 2 radians. So you see how we can do this? Seems a little bit weird at first. When you haven't done it before, it seems a little bit strange. Keep going. Phase difference between A and C. We'll do that one. That means A to C. It's not all that obvious what we should do here. I'm just going to try to fix my pi. It looked almost like an H. Let's see if I can fix it. There we go. So I want to do it from here to here or from here to here. You know the difference. How in the world do I do that? Well, I could just do it mathematically. I can say hey, 2 pi minus pi over 2. I can say that. So I could just figure it out that way. Now, another way to do it is just to count by these. Each of these small dots here, each of these one squares here, or one, you know, these lines, is one pi over two. So I could say, okay, it's off by one pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two. The answer is actually going to be three pi over two radians. Let's see if mathematically we get the same thing. Let's go from two pi, take that, subtract from it pi over two. We've got to get a common denominator. We've got to make them both over 2. So this one here would be uh, making this 4 pi over 2 minus 1 pi over 2. And now we've got a common denominator. That means 4 pi minus 1 pi is just 3 pi over 2 radians. Hooray! And we're not really caring so much about if one is forward or backwards. We're not really caring about the sign of it. We just care about the actual distance in between them. So let's look at another example. This time uh, we've got a sketch, okay, displacement for a traveling wave, sure. We're asking for the phase difference between points A and B. Again, it's not obvious, like, whoa, is this a distance in time? No, remember, we do the same thing as before. For phase difference, we go into the land of uh, pi over twos and stuff. So we're going to label this. Maybe I'll do it in a different color just to make it clearer. I'll call this one, remember, instead of four, I'm going to call this two pi. If that's the case, halfway there must be just be pi. If that's the case, half of that must be pi over 2. And again, 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, this then must be 3 pi over 2. All right, how is this going to help me? Well, I've got to try to figure out these distances here. Now, I might even have to go further than this, so I think I'm going to even split these up into halves even. Because you notice this A and B are considered like in the halfway marks in between them. All right, so what's this thing? This thing right here is, well, it's half of pi over 2, which must be pi over 4. If that's the case, I'm going to keep counting. i got 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4. This must be 3 pi over 4. If that's the case, this must be 4 pi over 4, which reduces. That's fine. This must be 5 pi over 4. That's going to be one of the important ones here. 
If this is 6 pi over 4, this must be 7 pi over 4. And the last one must be 8 pi over 4, which reduces to 2 pi. So we're good. Now the reason I did this is because now it's a lot simpler. Now I can just say, hey, what's this distance between A and B? Well, it's going to be this minus this. In other words, I can say it's going to be 7 pi over 4. Whoops, i got to write it properly like this. 7 pi over 4. All that minus... 5 pi over 4. If I do that, let's see. Common denominator is good. So I can just say, what's 7 pi minus 5 pi? Ah, oh, it's 2 pi. So I got 2 pi over 4. And hey, what's 2 pi divided by 4? It's equal to pi over 2 radians. So there's my final answer. So we've got our answer now for this one right here like this. Yay. Another way to look at it would have been, hey, each of these, each single square is a pi over 4, or you could say every two of these is a pi over 2. And you can say, hey, the distance from this one to this one, there's two of these little pieces, right? So 1, 2, that must also be a pi over 2. That's another way to think of it. It doesn't matter how you get there, does it? As long as you can get there. So you see we've learned about uh, phase angle with traveling ways. The key was, remember, assign 2 pi to your period, like to your last point in your cycle, and then just figure out the rest of the points and then find the distance between them.